Hi, Seth David here from NerdEnterprises.com and I wanted to give you another brief webcast to give you a little bit of a taste of how you can get some very powerful and valuable information out of your financial reports, one in particular by simply changing one little setting on your profit and loss statement. So let me get right into that and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Most of us are accustomed to going here to reports, company and financial, and running the standard profit and loss here. And that gives us, of course, useful information in terms of how the company performed as far as income and expenses go over a set period of time. Now, the default is this month to date, and we're going to want to change that to, let's just do this fiscal year to date. And what that gives us is the entire year up until now. And you can look at this, and of course, it tells you here's all the income you've earned, and here are all, here are all the expenses you've incurred. And a lot of us love to go right to the net income and look how much did we make for this period. One thing that you can do that will change this and make it so much more valuable is a very simple little tweak on this, which is done by going over here to where it says columns and dropping down the total only and turning that into the month. When you click on that, as you'll see, you'll now have information laid out month by month in a column format for the entire year. And this is much more powerful in terms of being able to analyze your company and understand what went on with your company. Looking right down at the bottom here, in January right away, I can see I did 2400 net. Then I can see in February I had a loss of 1000 and in March I had a loss of 8500 I want to look at that. I want to find out why did I lose so much more money in March and not make a profit for that matter. And so running the report and looking at it in this format gives me some immediate opportunities to get insights into how my company performed and why it performed the way it did over a given period of time. And now in the next section I'm going to show you how you can begin to take this a whole lot further by exporting this into Excel and taking a look at some of the things you can do once this information is laid out in Excel for you. So once we're ready to go a little further with the analysis, we can come over here and click where it says export. And we make sure our settings are the way we like them. The main things to me are no space between the columns and setting the header to the screen in Excel. Those are the most important ones. The other ones you can play with and uh, see what you like. And we click export again and it brings it into Excel for us. Now once we've got this in place, uh, for the purposes of this, I'm going to actually eliminate all the columns from August forward because I'm going to sort of pretend that we're in the year 2010, which is where I'm recording this in the month of July, so that August forward would be projected, this would be the historical. So let's format this as a date. Control plus one gives me the date format. I go into my date formatting choices double digits that's great then I say one one ten two just do the first of every month as my headers and this becomes important because a you always want consistency when you're doing any kind of financial modeling like this and B when you get into more complex financial models you may actually want to perform operations where you're looking up the uh, the month to compare information so it becomes very important to make sure you get this in a true date format. So now I've got January through December in here. Let me check the formatting. Again, we've got to do it double digit date format. And I recommend just editing each one just to make sure it's critically important that Excel recognizes these as dates. Now, once we've got that in place, it's really easy to do the next year because I can copy that whole range over and then do a search and replace, finding 2010, replacing it with 2011. And of course, I should get 12 replacements. OK, and close. Now, we're ready to do the fun part. The first thing is we want to get all our formulas extended out. So I'm just going to do some copy and pasting. Got the cost of goods sold and the gross profit. So we we're just looking for those subtotals. So you're looking for the thick black lines there because that kind of lets you know where those subtotals are. And the rest of these are all formulas. I'm also going to very quickly, because these dotted lines annoy me, come over here and get rid of them. Paste the formatting on the dates so that's consistent. Now 
we're ready to start kind of doing the layout. So I'm going to format these for input. I'm just going to put zeros in to fill the space for now, and I just my personal preference is the comma formatting. Then we're going to copy and paste this down, just so we can see where we need to start laying out the projected numbers. Then, if I really want to just kind of get a filler in there, because I'm not going to get into all how to uh, write the assumptions and so on, you can take an average of the last six months, copy that over so it becomes a rolling average. And you could roll that out, and already you start to get an idea of what your projections look like. What the, assuming that there's no substantial increase or decrease in sales or expenses. But this is a good way to get started. Now what happens is then, of course, you go back through this and you start looking at your sources of income. So depending on your business model, you might look at income by customer if you have a recurring business with the same customers. And you can start projecting what you're going to be doing business-wise with them and so on and so forth. And what I encourage you to do, if you really want to learn how to take this stuff a lot further, is come over to my website. Go to the Learning Center here, and I'm going to post the links wherever I've posted this video so you can get right in. The first one is called Forecasting Your QuickBooks Statements in Excel. And what this does is this takes what I've just done about 10 steps further and shows you how to write the formulas, uh, how to make assumptions, and how to build out the balance sheet and, this, and a simplified statement of cash flows so that the bottom line is when you're done, you can project out to the end of 2011 or the end of two years from now if you want to a, a rough estimate of what you think your income and expenses are going to be and possibly more importantly how much money you can expect to have in the bank now of course it's never going to be 100 percent accurate because things beyond your uh, awareness will happen however you can give yourself a pretty good idea and as long as you're conservative which means underestimate on the income overestimate on the expenses then hopefully if you've done a good job of that any surprises will happen in your favor and not against your favor and that's what I do for clients when clients call us up and once we've got a bookkeeper out and we've confirmed that the bookkeeping is accurate because of course that's the key the bookkeeping information has to be accurate in order for this to be uh, meaningful once we're there, then I will go in myself with the clients and actually do this kind of stuff for them. The other class I encourage you to, to take here in our Learning Center, it's only $35, is understanding your financial statements. What story are your numbers telling you? And that's going to take you back to this report, and that's going to show you how to take a look at months like March, where we were negative by 8500 and drill into the numbers and, and, and really kind of audit the numbers and teach you how to come up with a hypothesis about what might explain what happened when you look at the trends and the numbers here. And then it shows you how to confirm whether or not you can support that explanation. And if not, it shows you how to find out ultimately why it did happen happen if it was if it was different than what you would have expected to see so really good class really valuable information the people who took it live with me were really happy and uh, so I encourage you to visit us at nerdenterprises.com and of course I always welcome your comments and questions just email me at seth at nerdenterprises.com or nerdenterprises.com forward slash blog and you can fill out the ask us form and that goes in an email to me and I look forward to seeing you on the web